Intel's getting ready to release the most exciting CPU that we've seen in years. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now, you can get a Windows 11 CD key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 11, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay, look, the 9800X 3D, I got it. It's an incredible CPU, and for a lot of gamers, it's gonna be more than enough. But we got 500 hertz OLEDs, and I'm even hearing about 700 hertz plus OLEDs coming on the horizon. If you wanna play your competitive games at insane frame rates, or you need to have extra rendering for exporting video quicker, or let's face it, games in general are becoming less and less optimized, Maybe you just need to scrape by at 60 FPS because the game runs so poorly. Well, then you probably need a new CPU. And also, as much as I love the 9800X3D, well, memory compatibility has been a bit of a challenge for me, and the memory training at higher speeds has definitely been, well, it's left something to be desired. I don't really enjoy the random two minute boot times, that definitely doesn't make me feel good about my system. So again, as great as that CPU is, look, fellas, I've been waiting for a new CPU to really entice me, and it looks like that CPU is here with Intel's upcoming Nova Lake processors. Now, we got a ton of information about these new CPUs. Let's dive in, and first of all, we got some information that comes from a videocards.com article, and according to this article, well, it looks like a Twitter user known as Jaykin, who apparently, according to video cards, has a strong track record with Intel updates, so it sounds like he's leaked a good number of things with decent accuracy in the past, put out some information about these Nova Lake CPUs specifically, and this one is crazy. Apparently, it's going to support not only 8,000 mega transfers seemingly out of the box, one DIMM per channel, single rank, so keep that in mind, but also he went on to extrapolate a whole lot more about the CPUs, including the fact that apparently it's going to have 32 PCIe 5 lanes and 16 PCIe 4 lanes. Now, there's a bit of debate as to how these will be divided up, but overall, it looks like, yes, you're getting 48 PCIe lanes, and it sounds like it's very likely that at least 32 of those lanes will be direct to the CPU in some way, shape, or form. Although, according to him, he said that there will be more details soon. So we'll have to wait and see. Maybe this is a little bit of miscommunication. It won't be this great because let me tell you, 32 PCIe lanes to your CPU, especially if they're Gen 5, would be a massive improvement over what we currently have and would lead to a situation where finally there's gonna be absolutely no bottlenecks for the average consumers. You won't feel like you need to jump over to something like Threadripper to be running everything you could possibly want in your PC. But that's just one exciting part about this new CPU. In fact, we have another leak coming over here from WCCF Tech where they found someone by the name of Chili Dog over on Twitter. Now, again, this is another quote unquote leak. And to be honest with you, I don't know how good this person's track record is. This is the first time I've seen them. So definitely take it with a grain of salt, but they've leaked the core counts. It does line up with some previous reports or is similar to stuff that a well known leaker that you may know who goes by Red Gaming Tech, who's definitely gotten a ton of stuff right in the past, has said as well. And here this person claims that apparently the Core Ultra 9 is going to have 16 P cores, yes, 16 performance or gaming cores, and get this 32 E cores and four ultra low power cores. So what we're talking about is a processor that has 52 cores. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that sounds really exciting because not only would that allow me to absolutely destroy, absolutely demolish any type of video rendering I could possibly throw at this thing, but it would also mean that if I'm downloading an update to a game, anything like that is going to absolutely rip straight through it, and this is going to be, for me, probably an end game processor, at least for quite some time, until games get even worse and worse optimized, and of course, hopefully more importantly, games get more and more detailed with maybe more AI interactions requiring a much faster CPU at some point in the future, but we're not there yet, we are here. And a 52 core processor with 16 performance cores sounds like an absolute treat to me. But you might be asking, 
Well, sure, a 52 core processor with a ton of PCIe lanes sounds great for creators, but I'm a gamer. I don't need all this nonsense. I don't want to give Intel my hard earned buckaroos for something that I don't need. Well, you might be interested in this one as well, because apparently, according to Red Gaming Tech, and this comes from a video a little while ago, and I will have all my sources linked in the description below, but according to him, they are apparently going to be working on some sort of an X3D portion of the chip. Now this could be in, you know, we could be maybe misinterpreting things here, but this does originate from a slide where they did go ahead and show that yes, there are gonna be some sort of, it appears as though through silicon vias attaching to external cache, much like what you see with X3D on AMD. And this is what has allowed AMD to have incredibly strong gaming performance. So a new architecture, 52 cores, 48 PCIe lanes plus X3D cache, which by the way, according to Red Gaming Tech, he was hearing a little while ago, it sounds like around 144 megabytes, which if you compare that to what we have on the Core Ultra 285K, that is a four times increase in cache. Yes, four times, woo, <laughs> four times increase. That is insane. And to be honest with you guys, when you start adding up all these stuff, all the PCI lanes, the IPC increases that you should likely be seeing, probably higher clock speeds, in fact, much higher clock speeds, especially if it is in terms of the fabric. I've heard some rumors that potentially the IO as well as the performance cores might be on the same die, eliminating that latency and all these other various fixes, plus the insane 144 megabytes of cache. This is gonna be a monster CPU for rendering, video editing, gaming, you name it. This thing sounds absolutely insane, but you might be asking the question, when is it gonna be out? Is it gonna be out this year? I don't think so. Look, I've heard and I've also you know, seen other people talk about, such as Red Gaming Tech, a potential refresh of the current CPUs that are out on the market right now. If that happens, it'll probably be this year, which means that these CPUs would have to come out next year. So what I'm telling you is, if you do see new CPUs come out this year, whether it's from AMD or Intel, I think it's unlikely you'll see anything from AMD, but let's say that they have their own refresh as well. I would probably go ahead and wait to see what the next big leaps from both companies are gonna be coming out next year. We do also know that Zen 6 is supposed to be a pretty big departure in a lot of ways from Zen 5. So I would wait to see Nova Lake versus Zen 6. When those two processors are out, I think you'll have your answer as to which one is gonna be better because I think they're gonna actually move to 12 cores per cluster on Zen 6 as well. So you could have a situation where it's like a 24 core versus a 52 core. And I think Intel will have the advantage in multi-core, but you know, could AMD still have the lead in gaming or will Intel take it with 144 megabytes of cache? Is that gonna be enough for them to, you know, get the lead over AMD? And I'll leave you with one more thing. I do think you are gonna see in some scenarios a 40% or greater gaming performance uplift over something like a 265K, 285K. Why do I say that? Look, I'll tell you this right now. We don't have absolute confirmation on the performance numbers of this thing. So, you know, definitely take this with a grain of salt. But what I have noticed is that when you really tune the absolute bejesus out of Core Ultra, I ran into some scenarios, you know, if memory serves me correctly, where I had, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60% performance uplifts in select gaming scenarios by eliminating memory as well as latency bottlenecks within the architecture. If Intel does that out of the box, which I suspect they will, that's what you can probably expect out of these CPUs, meaning yes, Nova Lake is gonna be an absolute demon when it comes to gaming, assuming they don't screw it up. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that a 52 core X3D processor from Intel would be something you would actually want to buy? Or do you think it's gonna fall short of expectations? And maybe you're looking forward to Zen 6 more. Let me know in the comments below which one you think is gonna be better, Zen 6 or Nova Lake? Which one will win in gaming? Which one will win in multi-core? And which one will present the better value and maybe even stability. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you wanna see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.